Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 25 of creating a space shooter with Godot. I'm trying out a different recording process and some new audio equipment, so let me know if it sounds better or worse. So right now, if an enemy dies, it just kind of disappears from the screen and there's no, you know, particle effect or anything. So we're going to add something similar to our meteor effect when the meteor gets destroyed, but for enemies. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new scene. It's going to be a 2D scene and we are going to have a CPU particles 2D node, of course. And we'll just make that the scene root and delete the old node 2D. We're just going to have a little particle effect. I'm going to name this our enemy explosion. And then we can save this scene in the enemy folder as enemy explosion.tscene. From here, it's basically just up to your preferences, of course. So I'm just going to make a really quick effect. I'm just going to change the direction to all be zero. And I'll set the spread to 180 and I will turn off the gravity by setting that to zero. Then we will give it an initial velocity. I don't know, we can try something like 100. And with those settings, we instantly have all these particles spewing out in all different directions. Now this is an explosion. So under the time tab, we want the explosiveness to be at one. We want them all to come out at the exact same time. You can see the change right there. And I also want the lifetime to be, to be a bit shorter, I think, something like a half a second or something like that, and we'll increase the amount to have like, I don't know, 50 of them at once, just so it's something like that. Now they're a bit too uniform, so we'll give them all some random initial velocities. We'll just inc increase the random slider here, eh, probably pretty high, like 80% random, that way we get a bunch of these things just kind of spewing out. We can then go ahead and go to the color, and I'm going to add in a color just so that they're not white, maybe I'll do something around the orange spectrum. Kind of like that, and we'll see how that looks. All right, so that's that. The next thing we have to do is actually make sure this gets removed once this particle system finishes. So first of all, we have to make sure the one shot option is checked. That way it only happens once. So if we check the emitting box, it happens once, and then emitting turns off. And once emitting turns off, we need to remove this effect from the scene. So we're gonna attach a script to our enemy explosion, like so. And in the ready function, we simply have to set emitting equal to true. We need to start this particle system. And just like the meteor effect, in the process function, if we are no longer emitting, then we simply have to queue free this effect. We have to remove it from the scene. All right, now we can actually use this enemy explosion in our enemy script whenever an enemy dies. So first we have to preload it so that we can actually instance it. So var pl enemy explosion, we'll say preload, and we'll go to the enemy folder and load the enemy explosion.t scene. Next, whenever an enemy gets damaged and its health goes below zero, we have to create that effect before we remove this enemy. So we'll do var effect, set that equal to our preloaded enemy explosion.instance. We'll have to set its position so we'll do effect dot global position equals our global position. And then we will simply add the effect to the scene. Get tree dot current scene dot add child. And we'll pass in the effect there. Now let's take a look what happens when we get an enemy that gets killed by us. All right, there's one. If we start shooting at it, dies, we get kind of like that explosion effect. And from here, it's just making this explosion effect however you want it to be. Usually when I'm tweaking the settings, I uncheck one shot and I check emitting just so I can see it over and over again. And then I start doing stuff. For instance, my scale I think should be probably much bigger for this explosion. Like we can scale these things by five and maybe make it a bit random like that. Maybe five is too much. We'll try four, something along those lines. And we can also have it do a few different things such as rotate if we want. I'm just gonna stick with a slightly bigger scale there, and I did that wrong. We have to check one shot, and make sure emitting is unchecked. That way it only happens once, of course, and it actually gets removed. And we'll see what that looks like. So if we kill this enemy here, yep, we see that explosion effect. I'm sure you guys can spend a little bit more time and actually kind of make that look better. I think the one other thing I'm going to do here is under color, I'm going to actually add a color ramp to make them fade out rather than just disappear. So. I'm just going to create a new color ramp instead, which takes a gradient here. I'll click on the colors. My first color is going to be kind of a dark orange color. So I'll just copy the color code like here. And I'll set the second color to the same thing, like so. 
but I'm going to make the alpha all the way at zero, which means it's going to fade out as it runs. And if we make this emit, you see they kind of fade out now, rather than just disappear immediately. I'm sure everyone watching this episode can make a better effect than I just made, but it gives you the idea. And of course our meteor effect still works. So that's that. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next episode.